Welcome back everyone, Ronan here, and today I'm going to cover Divinity Original Sin and I'm going to show a warrior build and give some advice about it. Now, I'm going to select my knight. Medora is the character I selected from the beginning. Uh, I kept her around. I'm considering removing her from the group, but I mean at this point, unless I went and got a character from my tavern, I don't see why I should remove her. Now, in the beginning, a knight slash warrior is really effective. It's really good at tying up the enemy so that they don't reach you. They are basically your first line of defense. As you level further, you can use summons or even crowd control to take care of this, which I briefly covered in my mage guide. Stat wise, you want enough strength to be able to equip whatever gear you uh, have access to. Right now, 13 is my magic number. It also affects your chance to hit. It doesn't say your chance to hit, so I guess it's just when you hover over somebody. So 89 on my mage, 70 on my rogue. You don't want to be missing. You'll be using skills more than just auto attack. Dexterity, you don't need to put any in there. Int, only if you're making a cleric variant, where your cleric is also your tank. So you can actually heal and debuff. It's not as effective because it's a hybrid class, but it can work at just tying up the enemy because you can still make a pretty uh, tanky cleric. Constitution is important, not only for the AP, but you also want a good amount of health. You actually want this class to be able to take a hit for more than one turn without having to rely on a mage to heal it. Speed. I have 8 as a base. Uh, ideally you want to have an off number, but speed will also affect your movement. So this is really important on a melee class like this because you won't be stealthing around the field, you won't be teleporting. You do have two abilities that help you close the gap, but depending on how much AP it costs, you may as well just walk to it depending. Uh, I have a lot here. Four is quite a bit for a warrior, and especially once I start throwing on haste. 468, so I, it's not as big of an increase as I thought it was. But still, that's a lot of movement per AP. Uh, perception, you don't really need any because that's going to be your rogue's job. Your main focus is not damage, but as you go along in the game, you can change your equipment. In the beginning, I highly recommend, because there's a lot of skeletons, so a mace or a club and a shield. You'll need the shield to be able to survive a little bit better in the beginning. I knew in the long run, I'd be going two-handed, so I'd never put any points in single-handed. But that was my plan from the start. So if you plan on just making a tank, and you don't plan on using two-handed weapons, then go for it, go single-handed you'll be just fine. I do use a lot of crowd control, so I wanted the extra DPS. Now at this point, I can either replace with another mage or even maybe uh, a ranger. Defense. This is where I put a lot of my points because the whole goal for this character was to just stand there and take a hit or not get CC'd. Armor Specialist is really important because it will negate the movement penalty from your armor. Bodybuilding, it's all the physical type of debuffs that you can get, it'll help you prevent those. If you get crowd controlled, you're not going to be an effective member in your team. You don't want that to happen and since this is kind of your soaker class, you're going to be targeted a lot. I knew I wasn't going with a shield, but yes, a shield would actually be good, you'd be blocking a lot more. If I don't use a shield, I get zero blocking. You get 5% per point in blocking. This shield has 17% blocking. So you start adding 25, I mean, you're going to be blocking almost half the hits. But there's actually shields that are even higher. If you plan on doing sword and board, I highly recommend getting that one. If you don't plan on it, then don't use it. You have to pre-plan your characters in this game for the most part. So willpower is the same as bodybuilding, but instead it's the mental side of it. So you also need a lot of this. Skills. For this character, I only picked man at arms because I was mainly just building a physical character. If you pick, let's say, a cleric, you'd go Hydra Sophist, and then you would need some intelligence. You need a base of 8 to have uh, the minimal effectiveness in this game. Anything lower than that, you'll get a penalty incurred for casting spells. Uh, you can also go Scoundrel if you want an extra jump, or a haste, even... Uh, invisibility, but that won't really help you because you're there to soak damage. 
I didn't bother getting any of the personality. My main focus was really the defense for this character, so that's where all my points went, pretty much. This brings me to Nasty Deeds. And the reason why I'm going for a sneak build for a tank, it's not to hide in between waves, it's to spend 1 AP once I reach 5 to sneak, and then you can actually hit somebody a lot harder this way, as long as you have these talents that I'm going to talk about. So all skilled up is actually really good to take in the beginning because it'll give you a small boost that will help you get new abilities, more tanking, more DPS with your two-handed weapon. Bully, you're mainly a physical class and this boosts your damage if the target is slowed, crippled, or knocked down. Now two of your abilities create knockdowns, so it's good to have this spell. You want the extra 50% damage, that's, that's huge. Combat Kid. This is actually really good and it comes automatically on Medora. You don't actually need to have willpower at 5 to get it. Whenever you're not at 1 HP and you get hit enough that it would kill you, it saves you. You will not die that turn, or at least that hit. So that's really handy. I've seen it proc a few times. Opportunist is amazing. The main reason why you want this is it creates a circle around you. So that if there's an enemy comes into your circle and then tries to leave, you'll actually hit them. Just the action of hitting them, it cancels their move. They have to use one to maybe even two action points to break away from you. So by doing that, you're slowing them down from reaching your casters. And it actually hits them for the most part. Like, as long as your, your accuracy is high enough, you'll still do damage. And seeing as I'm using a two-handed weapon, I'm still doing a lot of damage with this. So it's very handy. I've killed a few targets with this opportunist. Picture of health. Uh, it's just an extra HP boost based on your man at arm skills. That's 5% per man at arms. So 5 times 5 is 25%. Water rush. Bigger and better. You won't need far out man unless you're doing spells. 5 star dinner would be helpful. It would boost your stats with food. Glass Cannon, stay away from it if you're planning on making a tanking class. Gorilla is where it comes handy if you can manage to get 5 sneak. It will double your attack damage while sneaking. You don't need to get backstabs. So you just basically stealth, attack, and if you're at 5 sneak, it only costs 1 AP to double your attack. That's insane. That's just ridiculous amount of damage. Especially if you're using a two-handed weapon. Now you're looking at... Uh, 370 to uh, about 928 or so so that's huge leech is handy because you'll be slashing a lot you'll be doing a lot of melee damage and up close so whether you're bleeding or the enemy's bleeding on your turn you actually heal up some of that health with leech now if you're trying to build a stronger tank thick skin I'm pretty sure at this point I'd still have enough for two of these abilities Zombie is also really good if you're building a tank, especially if you're going against poison enemies. Now poison will uh, heal you, but then you can no longer use healing on your character. So you'll actually take damage if you use heals. So it's kind of sketchy, but it works. I'm not sure if it's like the enemy. Whenever you bleed, you now bleed poison. It's another possibility. But there's enough poison in the game and it gives you a different healing mechanic. Because then instead of, you know, if you have leech also, you can use bloodletting and you'll heal. With this, you can use poison dart or something and still heal that character. Just remember not to use uh, cure spells because you'll actually kill that guy probably. Anaconda, if you're using uh, one-handed crushing weapons. Backstabbers at night, you won't need this. You'll be using strength weapons. Uh, this, in a nutshell, is how I build a tanking class or at least a melee class, to tie up the enemy. Again, hopefully this information has been useful for you. Uh, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video, which should be the Rogue. Have a good night, guys.